you, Amiga. And uh, thank you, Sudan, for this opportunity. And uh, uh, thank you, Johnny and Prita, for those meaningful songs. And uh, thank Fini for the prayer. And uh, today's topic is uh, faith in times of trouble. You know, faith is a very familiar topic for all of us because we believe in God. That's why we call ourselves believers, isn't it? And of course, some people don't believe in God. That's a different problem. Uh, there's a story about an incident that happened uh, in one of the university campuses in the United States. And as you know, uh, students get together in any university campus and have discussions about uh, different topics. And uh, so there was a group of students having discussion on different topics. And the topic got focused on the existence of God. And uh, they were discussing back and forth. And one of them got onto the stage and said, friends, here's a challenge. I can prove to all of you that there is no God. And now I say, if there is a God, let him strike me down right now. Everybody looked up, stunned. And one football player, I mean, American football player, I hope you have seen some of them, a hefty, tall football player, got onto the stage, walked straight to the man, and gave him a real strong punch. And the fellow fell down flat on the ground. And then he just managed to get up and he stood up and looked at the football player and said, man, why did you do that? He said, God was too busy, so he sent me. I don't think we need any football player to remind us about God's existence because we believe God is, and we are believers. So the question is not about whether we believe or not. It's not about whether we have faith or not, but it's, it's about what kind of faith we have. What kind of faith? Faith that will carry us through in times of trouble like this, faith in times of trouble. And uh, if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 14. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 14. And uh, there is an incident recorded there from verses 22 to 32. Now, as I said, we believe in God and we experience God by faith in our life. As you know, the word of God says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, by grace, you have been saved through faith. And then in Romans 1, 17, you read, the righteous will live by faith. Then again, Hebrews Chapter 11, verse 6 says, Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So we live by faith. And the Lord wants his followers, his disciples, to live by faith in all circumstances, in all the situations. So here in this incident, you find the Lord teaching something to his disciples about faith. As you see in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 14, 
verse 22 says, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side. As you know, this happened immediately after Jesus performed the miracle of feeding more than 5,000 with five loaves and two fishes. So now, Jesus told the disciples to get into the boat and go to the other side. And the word of God says, after that, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. And he was there praying. And uh, he was there alone, the word of God says, till late that night. And by that time, the disciples were in the boat and they were almost in the middle of the lake. And then the word of God says, just before the dawn, shortly before the dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him, they thought it was a ghost. So they cried, it's a ghost. But Jesus immediately said, it's I, don't be afraid. And Peter, you know, he was excited as usual. And Peter said, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said, come. Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? You of little faith, why did you doubt? You know, we need to look at this incident and see what we learn. What we learn about faith. Now, I want to point out three things. First, Peter wanted to walk like Jesus. Peter wanted to walk like Jesus. That's a good thing, actually. You know, the disciple wants to imitate the master in everything. He wants to do whatever the master does. He wants to follow Jesus in every aspect. And he wants to walk like him, talk like him, and live like him. But that's the characteristic mark of a disciple. A disciple wants to follow the master, wants to walk like him. I tell you, friends, you and I must have that desire to walk like Jesus. To walk like Jesus. If you don't have that desire, there's something wrong. Peter wanted to walk like Jesus, a follower of Christ, a disciple of Christ, should have the desire to walk like Jesus. You know, you want to do what others do. We want to dress like others. We want to buy the house like others. We want to buy a car like others. We want to buy things like others. We want to walk like others. But the question is, do you, do I have the desire to walk like Jesus? A Christian actually is a disciple of Christ, isn't he? Uh, the word of God says that disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. That is Acts chapter 11, verse 26. So you and I, as disciples of Christ, as Christians, as believers, as those who believe in him, 
whatever the circumstances are, you need to, first of all, walk like him. Peter wanted to walk like Jesus. That's the first thing. The second thing you need to see there is Jesus also wanted Peter to walk like him. And Peter said, Lord, if it's you walking on the water, tell me to walk on the water and come to you. Jesus said, come. Jesus didn't say, no, 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 no. I don't want you to do that. Jesus said, come. Peter, you want to walk like me? I want you to do that. I want you to walk like me. Jesus also wanted Peter to walk like him. You know, the word of God says that we need to live like him. We need to walk like him. And let me just refer to one or two verses. In John's gospel, chapter 15, verse 12, Jesus said, love each other as I have loved you. Love each other as I have loved you. And in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32, Paul says, forgive each other as in Christ, God forgave you. Forgive each other as in Christ, God has forgiven you. And in 1 Peter 2.21, Peter says, Christ left an example that you should follow in his steps. You should follow in his steps. You know, he's not a God who is up there and just tells us what to do. No, he has been here. He has been here. He lived in this world. He walked on this earth. He showed us how to live. He showed us how to walk. And he says, I want you to walk like me. That requires faith. Is by faith we live in him. Is by faith we walk like him. We walked as we walk as even as he walked. And he wants us to walk in this world, even as he walked in this world. You know, he doesn't want us to think like others. Because we believe in him. We are his followers. We are his disciples. So the word of God makes it very clear that you and I as Christians, as disciples, as those who follow him, as those who have been called to walk like him, he doesn't want us to think like others, to talk like others, and to walk like others. You know, we Christians, we go to church and then we go home and we think like others. We talk like others. We walk like others. And then, you know, we walk like others and then tell others, tell other people how Christianity is different from their religions. The question in their mind is, how Christianity has made you different. How Christianity has made you different. You know, beloved, you can make a difference in the world by being different from the world. Are you listening? I said, you can make a difference in the world by being different from the world. Don't just think like others. Don't just walk like others. Because you are a disciple of Jesus. And he has called you and I to walk like him. Peter wanted to walk like Jesus. Jesus also wanted Peter to walk like him. 
and uh, that requires faith in times of trouble how to walk like him how to walk like him you know we have faith and we believe and we trust him but when we go through times of trouble our faith is shaken up that's a reality that's a reality we feel our faith is shaken up and you see there the third thing i want you to see peter had a problem in walking in faith he had a problem in walking in faith jesus said come peter if you want to walk like me come and the word of god says peter got down from the boat he got out of the boat and got down on the water and walked on the water the word of god says peter walked on the water verse 29 and came toward jesus by faith trusting jesus words peter said okay master even as you told me i will walk as you walk and he got down on the water and peter walked on water and came toward jesus and then verse 30 says but but when he saw the wind he was afraid and beginning to sink when he saw the wind he was afraid and beginning to sink cried out lord save me and verse 31 you read jesus said you of little faith jesus stretched out his hand and caught hold of him and pulled him up and said you of little faith why did you doubt why did you doubt see there was peter's problem Peter's problem was not the winds and the waves. Of course, you and I go through times of trouble. It is a problem. It is a problem, and we face challenges. We face, we are facing right now, unprecedented crisis around the world, all over the, this world. unprecedented crisis things we never faced things we never expected we would face but in the midst of all those challenges in the midst of this crisis how do we how do we walk how do we walk even as jesus wants us to walk Now Peter saw the wind and the waves and started sinking and Jesus was saying you of little faith why did you doubt Of course the wind was strong the waves were rising up it was an overwhelming situation you cannot minimize the problems we face and we cannot ignore is real is threatening overwhelming and it's shaken up our faith but then the problem is not external jesus is pointing out and jesus is telling us the problem is not external the problem is internal you of little faith why did you doubt the problem is internal started doubting he started doubting he saw the wind he was walking on the water 
he was going through that situation in faith. But when he saw the situation, when he saw the circumstances, then he started doubting. Can I do it? Am I really doing it? Can I make it? Can I make it? And he started singing. He started doubting and he started sinking. Because Jesus makes it very clear. He makes the problem very clear. Peter, you were walking. You wanted to walk like me. And I wanted you to walk like me. And I said, come. And I said, you can walk. And I expect you to walk through all of this. In the midst of the winds and the waves, I want you to walk in faith, trusting me. And I know you can get through. So I said, you come, walk. But then why did you doubt? Why did you doubt? You know, Jesus said, you of little faith. You know, it's not the quantity of faith. It is the quality Jesus is talking about. It is not the amount of faith. It is the kind of faith. It's a kind of faith. How do I know that? Because right there, you know, in Matthew's gospel, chapter 17, verse 20, Jesus is saying, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can tell this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. And that's nothing impossible for you. That means faith works. Faith works even in impossible situations. What kind of faith? How much of faith? Even if we have faith as small as a mustard seed. So when he's telling Peter, you of little faith, he's not talking about the amount of faith, but the kind of faith. He's not talking about the quantity of faith, but the quality of faith. What kind of faith? Faith without doubt. Faith without doubt. You know, all these circumstances and situations, all the challenges and the crisis kind of bring questions, doubt, doubts, questions and doubts. Why is it happening? Why is it like this? Why? Why? How I can do this? How can I go through this? How can I make it? All the questions of why and how. Start doubting, start thinking. You know, in James chapter 1, verse 6, the word of God says, He who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. He who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. It was not the external wind. It was not the wind outside that made Peter to sink. It was the wind of doubt inside his heart that made him sink. Follow me. That's, that's what Jesus wants us to learn. Faith that sustains us in all situations. Faith that carries you and me through all situations. Faith that holds us up. Faith that lifts you up. Faith that helps you to overcome, overcome. Of course, the wind was strong. Of course, the waves are up. 
Of course, it was intimidating situation. Of course, it was a threatening. In spite of, in the midst of all of that, Jesus says, I want you to walk. Peter, I want you to walk. So, that's the first lesson the Lord wanted the disciples to learn. A faith that can sustain you and carry you all the way through in times of trouble. And the second lesson uh, you find in Matthew's Gospel again, I want you to turn to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 8. Chapter 8, verse 23. Matthew chapter 8, verse 23. You read there, then he got into the boat, that's Jesus, got into the boat, and his disciples followed him. Suddenly, a furious storm came up on the lake. Listen, the word of God says, Jesus got into the boat and his disciples followed him. Then suddenly a furious storm came up. Can you face a storm and you follow Jesus? Jesus got into the boat and the word of God says the disciples followed him. And suddenly, a furious storm came up. The first thing I want you to learn in this passage is that the Lord allows winds and the waves in our life. The Lord allows the winds and the waves in our lives. The disciples followed him suddenly a furious storm came up on the lake. And so that the waves swept over the boat. And now the disciples, the disciples are really facing another crisis, a threatening situation. You know, the Lord wants us to teach. Why does he allow, allow, why does he allow such situations? Why does he allow the winds and the waves? I feel the Lord wants us to teach faith, faith. And here we need to understand the Lord wants us to teach through circumstances, through challenges, as we go through those situations. You know, the Lord wants to test us. That's something the Bible teaches very clearly. The Lord wants to test his people. Test what? Test our faith. You know, Satan brings temptation. God does not tempt us, the Bible says. But God does test us. He does test our faith. Because the Bible says in Genesis chapter 22, verse 1, God tested Abraham. And you know the story. God tested Abraham. What aspect in Abraham's life? God tested Abraham's faith, even to the point of asking Abraham to put his only son on the altar. God tested Abraham to that extent. And God allows Satan to test us. God allows Satan to attack us to test our faith. God does test us by allowing Satan to attack us. You know, the life of Job, life of Job. The word of God says Job was 
a blameless and upright man. And uh, Satan appeared before God and God said, did you watch the life of Job, my child? Satan said, of course. And I know you have blessed Job, but you have put a hedge of protection around him. Of course he is what he is. He is blessed, he is happy, everything is going well. But allow me to attack him, then see what. God said, yes, I will allow you. Let's see what happens. And you know the story. God allowed Satan to attack Job. Job lost everything, lost his possessions, lost his sons and daughters. And his own wife looked at him and said, do you still believe God? Curse God and die. And all his friends came along and said, Job, look what is happening. There should be a reason. All this is happening because maybe you did something against God. But you know, Job was blameless, the word of God says. He was upright. But then Job went through the struggle. Job started asking questions. Why? Why is this happening? How can I face this? How can I go through this? But then finally, finally, you read in Job chapter 42, verse 2. Job says, Lord, you can do all things. I know you can do all things. Nothing, nothing can stop your plan for my life. As one translation says, your plans are unstoppable. I like that. Unstoppable. So, the Lord allows winds and the waves in our lives, but then nothing can thwart his plans. If only we believe. If only we go through all of that in faith. Even though our faith is shaken up, but we don't lose, we don't lose our faith. We don't give up. So that's the first thing we learn. The Lord allows the winds and the waves. The second thing we need to learn in this passage, we see the Lord was with them in the boat. The Lord is with us in our boat. He allows the winds and the waves in our life, but he's with us in our boat. You know, when bad things happen to good people, I said, when bad things happen to good people, we have questions, isn't it? The unbelievers ask the question, say, where is God? See, you say, you believe in God, you have faith in God, where is God? Look what's happening. Bad things happening to good people. But then we believers, we believe in God. We know God is with us. But then we have the same question, where is God? Not that we don't believe in God, but where is God? What is he doing in this situation? Where is he? Why does he allow all these things to happen? And where is he? What is he doing? And the word of God says in that passage, Matthew chapter 8, verse 24. Matthew 8, 24. But Jesus was sleeping. Jesus was sleeping. There was a furious storm and the winds were strong, 
and the waves were, were just rocking the boat and they are about to sink and are about to be drowned. And then you read, Jesus was sleeping. And the disciples went to him and said, Lord, how can you do this? We are drowning. We are about to die. What are you doing? You know, in times of trouble, when we go through challenging situations as we go through now, now we are upset, we are disturbed, we are shaken up, and we are upset. And we want the Lord to be upset. The Lord is not upset because he is not, he is not threatened by the circumstances that seem to threaten us. He is not affected by the circumstances that affect us. You and I need to affirm our faith in the Lord of all situations. The Lord who is in control of all circumstances. The Lord who is above all circumstances. The Lord who is not affected. So he is not upset, obviously. So we, we, we often, like the disciples, we feel, what is he doing? Why the Lord is just be quiet? Why? He's not doing anything. We are upset. We expect him to be upset. He's not. He is not upset. He waits. Why does he wait? I think maybe he wants us to learn some more lessons. He wants us to learn the lesson of faith more intensively more meaningfully, faith in times of trouble, faith that will be strong enough to sustain us in any situation. But he will, he will intervene. He did, he intervened. He does, even now, even today, he does. So he intervened. He got up and he rebuked the winds and the waves. The third thing I want you to learn the Lord allows the winds and the waves in our life. The Lord is with us in our boat. And then the third thing the Lord has authority over the winds and the waves. The Lord has authority over the winds and the waves. Jesus said in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 28, verse 18, all authority in heaven and on earth is given to me. All authority in heaven and on earth. That means authority over the supernatural and authority over the natural. Authority over all things in heaven and authority over all things on earth. Authority over the supernatural and the natural authority over the winds and the waves. So he can rebuke the winds and the waves. After this incident, you read there in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 8, verse 28, they went to the other side, and there were two men who came possessed by the demons, and the word of God says, the Lord Jesus drove the demons out of them. So he had authority over the demons. And then in, in Matthew chapter nine, right at the beginning of chapter nine, you see people bringing a paralyzed man to Jesus. And the Lord Jesus healed him. But then before the Lord Jesus asked him to take his bed and walk, which he did. But before that, 
he looked at that paralyzed man and said, son, your sins are forgiven. And the Pharisees and the Sadducees were there. They said, what is he doing? He is saying blasphemy. How can he say that? Jesus, knowing their thoughts, looked at them and said, I know what you are thinking, but I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority to forgive sins. See, in that passage you find that he had authority over nature, authority over the winds and the waves, and then you see authority over the demons, and then you see authority over sickness to heal the paralyzed man, but authority to forgive sins, authority to forgive sins. He had all authority. The Lord has authority over the winds and the waves. He has authority over all of our situations or all that happens to us, or all the circumstances that seem to confront us and threaten us. He has authority. And uh, faith, faith should enable us to trust him in the midst of, in spite of the times of trouble we go through. It's not easy to go through times of trouble. I know. It's not easy to go through pain and suffering. It's not easy when you go through all of that to face the questions, questions that challenge you, questions of why, how, but in the midst of all of that, recognize and affirm that he has all authority in heaven and on earth, all authority over the winds and the waves. That's the kind of faith I'm talking about, the kind of faith that can sustain us and take us through the times of trouble as faith in times of trouble. I want you to think of what we read in Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3. You know, the king Nebuchadnezzar. The word of God says, Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold and he wanted all people to bow down before the image of gold and worship that image. And there were three young men, Jewish young men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they worshipped the living God, God Jehovah. And they would not bow down before any image. So they didn't bow down before this gold image. So when that was reported to King Nebuchadnezzar, he summoned Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego and said, look, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego now, when the music is played, I want you to bow down before this gold image. If you don't, you'll be thrown into the fiery furnace. And they said, King, we will not bow down. Because the God whom we serve will deliver us from your hand. But even if he does not deliver us, we will not bow down. We will not give up our faith. You never give up. You never give up your faith in times of trouble. In times of trouble. 
And the word of God says, King Nebuchadnezzar got furious. He got furious. And he ordered the furnace to be heated seven times. And the word of God says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stood there looking at the fiery furnace being heated seven times more. But they did not give up their faith. You know why? I imagine when the fiery furnace was heated up seven times more, their faith increased seven times. Their faith increased seven times. That's the kind of faith in times of trouble. And you know the story. They were thrown into the fiery furnace. But the Lord who has authority over all things. Authority over the winds and the waves. Authority over the fire. was with them and carried them through. They came out of the fire unharmed, unharmed. And the King Nebuchadnezzar said, there is no other God who can save like this. That happens when you and I have a faith and continue to have faith in times of trouble. Faith that brings deliverance. Faith that gives you direction. Faith that makes you live and walk like him for his glory. God bless you. Shall we pray? Dear Lord, we thank you for your word and we thank you for the Holy Spirit who leads us into all the truth. Even as we read your word and understand and learn the truth you teach us. The truth concerning faith. Faith in times of trouble. Faith that sustains us. Faith that helps us to overcome. Faith that carries us all the way through. Help us, Lord, to live by faith and to walk by faith. Help us to walk even as you walked on this earth. Help us to recognize that you want us to walk even as you walked. And you want us to walk in faith. Walk through all the situations. Walk through the times of trouble in faith, knowing that we will not be put to shame because the Lord whom we believe, the Lord whom we trust and have faith as all authority. He is with us. You are with us. And you have all authority over the winds and the waves that seem to threaten us. But you will carry us through. You will. You are with us. So we thank you, Lord, for your presence that gives us the confidence to face all the challenges, knowing that you will carry us through and you will accomplish your plan in our lives if we continue to trust in you in the midst of and in spite of the challenges we face. We thank you. We love you. We pray this. In your name and for your sake, Lord Jesus. Amen.